fellow pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today we are going to do an ink swatching video. So today's inks are all gray inks or gray related inks that could be like pure gray, blue gray, green gray, purple gray, something that sort of shades a hue and gray, all in honor of the whole April showers adage since we are moving into April. Uh, just this seemed kind of like the perfect time to share some of my favorite gray hued inks. Uh, and I do really have a ton of them. These aren't even all of my favorites. It's just all that I could fit in a single spread. Uh, but these ones are ones I think in particular sort of evoke that sort of nature vibe a little bit. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first ink I wanted to talk about is going to be Fuyu Syogun. It's one of Pilot Uroshizuku's inks. It's very wet and absolutely gorgeous. It is one of my all-time favorite inks of any kind, and definitely one I think you should try if you have not tried before. So I love how this one kind of has a hint of blue in it, but it is a pretty um, straightforward gray tone outside of that. It also shades really in a quite a lovely manner, but I just, it's one of those grays that just really, really works well no matter what season we're talking about. I use it in one of my everyday pens and my everyday carry just because I know it's super reliable. It is again very wet so it works on even quite dry extra fine nibs uh, which I'd had such a, a problem with for ages and ages. My Caveco Sport writes uh, very very dry uh, and it is an extra fine so this is one of the few inks that I know does not hard start it just flows and is absolutely wonderful in that particular pen and in pretty much all of my pens okay my second ink of the day is going to be color versus Alpha Andromeda. I love this and I keep intending to buy a full bottle and I really need to because I'm almost out of this sample, but it is really, really lovely. It is quite a light ink, but one that I think works wonderfully well in a broader nib and it's just a beautiful, beautiful color. Okay, it's not quite dried down yet, but you can see it does tend to shade just a little bit lighter than the Pilot Hiroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. There's not a huge amount of shading 
per se, but I just really love this color. Um, it is quite light, so you do need, I think, uh, a broader nib to make it really easily legible, but I do find it to be an absolutely gorgeous color, and I've used it in stubs to great effect, so it would definitely recommend it. And you can see you do get a little bit of uh, haloing going on on the edge of the swatch, which does happen again in the broader nibs. Okay, next up is L'Artisan Pastelier Ancle Classique Glee de Pin. Um, one, I am terrible at French. Again, I say this every time. Please forgive the pronunciation. But Payne's Gray is really gorgeous. It is a slightly bluer gray than the Fuyus Yogan, I think. Uh, but it's another one that I use all the time. Uh, I really, really think it's a beautiful, beautiful shade of gray, and I would highly recommend it. Again, it's still a little bit wet, but I think you can see like it's a subtle difference, but there is a little bit more blue in the Glee de Pain. So if you are a fan of slightly bluer grays, this one might be the one for you. Okay, next one up, another favorite. This one is Herbans Vert de Glee. Uh, I, again, don't speak French, but I'm pretty sure that means green gray. <laughs> um, I have always loved this ink from the first time I saw someone swatch it. I don't even remember who it was, but it's just been a staple in my collection ever since. Uh, this is actually my second bottle, and I just really, really love this color. Okay, while I have had dryness issues with some other Urban inks, uh, Verdigli always seems to be quite a nice wet ink for me. I can use it even in some of my drier pens to help with, say, hard starts and whatnot. So if you are looking for quite a wet green-gray, the Verdigli is a really nice option. It's also just, it's got a little bit more pigment than some of the other ones that we've swatched so far. And it's just, I, didn't, I don't know, I just really, really like this color. Okay, so my camera opted to flip out a little bit there, and I'm now trying to fit two swatches, one of which is already here, uh, into this very small space. My bad for space management. Um, but yeah, so this ink right here is a Ferris Wheel Press Shimmer Ink. This is Adventurine, and it's a very pale gray with some gorgeous rose gold shimmer. I adore this ink. I sometimes have mixed feelings about... Ferris will press in their shimmers, but even though 
this bottle is so hard to work with because it does have a really narrow opening. Uh, and I always worried like my pen nib is going to catch on it and just flip the whole bottle over and I'm going to lose everything. I still continue to love this ink and still use it all the time because it is such a cool ink. So I'm going to go ahead and do the writing sample, even though you didn't get to see the swatch, uh, but it is quite a lovely shade. Now, one of the coolest things I think about this ink is that it goes through so many different phases. When you first put the ink down on the paper, it's got almost a muddy, murky look, but then as it starts to dry, you get this really clean, heavy shaded, light gray, and then all of this rose gold shimmer. And I just, I just think it's such a cool ink and it does so many cool things and it's fun to actively write with. The whole process is a really good, enjoyable uh, experience. So if you were looking for something like that, Ferris Wheel Press Adventurine may be the one for you. Okay, the next one is a fairly new to me ink. This is one of Birmingham Pen Company's beautiful, beautiful gray greens. And this is Pondweed. Okay, apologies for that ridiculously messy swatch and writing sample. I wish it were a little bit better. Uh, hopefully the next page will be since I won't be dealing with the header and I'll have a little bit of extra space. But that said, Pondweed is just a really subtle green gray leaning heavily more towards the gray element of things unlike the Verdict Leaf and Merban. Um, if you like slightly murkier, uh, I hesitate to say muddy, but like muddier colors, this one is definitely one to add to your arsenal. I really, really like it. It's quite wet and it works really well even in my fine Sailor Koi pen, which is like a very, very fine pen. Um, far more fine than the vast majority of my extra fine Western pens. So it, it definitely writes quite wet and is quite a lovely ink for that. Okay, moving on to another Birmingham Pen Company ink. This one is Molten Tin. I have said this from the very first time I swatched it uh, several months ago. I adore this color. It is sort of a lavender gray, but when you first write, it has this really interesting like red layer to it. I I don't even know what makes it do that, but it it's so cool and I love any ink that sort of transforms as it dries down uh, enough so that you almost get zero of that hint of red at all once it's completely dry. So just again, another fun writing experience.
There's that red that I was talking about. Now you can see here where it's still very, very wet compared to where it's starting to dry. The red is really apparent, but here it's already dried down to that lovely sort of lavender gray that I was telling you about. Uh, so once it gets completely dry, you'll be able to see the whole shift. All right, next up is a Cult Pens exclusive from Dominant Industry. This is Midnight. This one walks the line between blue-black, uh, blue-gray, and purple gray but I like it so much and I feel like it does fit with April showers especially like the nighttime uh, like when you're walking along the sidewalk and the light hits the wet sidewalk and it just is sort of beautiful and sparkly but super duper dark so that's what this one kind of evokes for me Okay, so in addition to being a shimmer ink, this one can run a little bit drier. Um, not horribly dry, but definitely maybe a little bit more dry leaning than, say, an Urban Verde Glee. Uh, but it's not dried down yet, but you can already see a little bit of that shimmer poking through. And like I said, it just reminds me of the streets and the sidewalks during the nighttime, just after rain, or even while it's raining. And I, I really, really love it for that feeling. Okay, the next ink we're going to take a look at is Troublemaker's Petrichor. This is actually my favorite Troublemaker ink. It is a chromo shader. It runs from blue to gray to green to purple. It is absolutely stunning. It is also ridiculously dry. It's one of those inks that um, I really only use in my broader nibs, like wet mediums and definitely in stubs, but not finicky stubs like uh, italics. Just just make sure you have a wet writing pen. Um, but it is absolutely worth any extra trouble because it's really, really beautiful.
So like I said, dry but absolutely gorgeous. You won't get the full effect until it completely dries down, but even in this wet swatch you can see how it shifts from some blues and teals at the edges to this purpley pink, and then there's still some greens. And then here in the writing sample, it's just a fantastic, fantastic chroma shader. Next up is last year's Diamine Reddit collaboration, and that is Celadon Cat. Um, I actually had never considered this a gray green until I was really looking at my swatches, and it actually is a really beautiful light gray green and fits perfectly well with the whole April showers theme. Okay, as you can see, an absolutely gorgeous pale shade of green, some really beautiful tones within the swatch, but it is very, very light. Uh, I have only used this in medium and stub nibs. I've never even tried it in a fine or an extra fine, so I can't guarantee that it would be not legible in an extra fine or fine. But just from here, I, I don't know. <laughs> but within mediums and stubs, this looks absolutely gorgeous. And you do get to see a lot of that really beautiful pale green that glide across the page. So we are going to finish things off with a couple of absolute favorites of mine from Vinta. This one is Haribon, which is also Apex Silver. Uh, if you couldn't guess, this is going to be a silver toned uh, ink with some beautiful blues and a little bit of lavender in there. Uh, and it is a shimmer and a gorgeous shimmer at that. Okay, I don't know if you could notice uh, with this particular lighting I have, because I'm just working off of my natural light from my window, but when you first lay the ink down, it does have like a pretty standard sort of silver gray going on, but then as it dries, you get these pinks and purples and blue tones popping in. So again, it's one of those inks that's a fun experience from start to finish, even as you are writing and then all the way through the dry time. Okay, last ink of the day. This is Vintage Aegean, also called Armada. This is not a shimmer ink. This is just a shader, and it is a beautiful one at that. Um, beautiful tones of grays, greens, little hints of pink, uh, but it is absolutely lovely.
Okay, as you can see, there's some gorgeous shading already going on while it's still wet, but in general, it's just a really well-behaved, beautiful shading gray ink. I absolutely adore this one. I use it a lot. Um, I'm actually nearly out of this bottle, which makes me really sad. So uh, definitely look at this one if you're just looking for something really beautiful and reliable, uh, wet, and just an excellent, excellent gray ink to have in your collection. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let all of these inks completely dry down just so you can get the feel for how they are in the finished product. Um, and then we'll be back to do some close-ups and just some final thoughts. Okay, so I let about 15 minutes pass by and everything has pretty much completely dried down. So you can get a good look and see what these might look like, you know, in your day-to-day -day use. So starting off, with the Pilot Hiroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. As I mentioned, just a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful ink. Very wet, very easy to use. It's got some hints of blue in it. And you can see in the text itself, you do get a nice amount of shade. And then moving on to this Colorverse Alpha Andromeda. I really need to buy a bottle of this. I think it's just so pretty, and I don't see as many people talking about this one, but you really you really get such an interesting color out of it. Um, I do think it's a little bit light, so it might be better for uh, medium and larger nibs, but, you know, I think it's absolutely worth giving it a shot. Here is my L'Artisan Pastelier Ancle Classique Glide de Pin. Um, it's just a little bit bluer than the Pilot Iroshizuku Fuyu Syogun. Uh, some beautiful, beautiful grays. I think a good amount of shading, which you can definitely see in the writing sample. Please forgive the fact that I am terrible at writing <laughs> with my Kakimori nib. Um, just got some advice from a friend, so I'm going to try that the next time around. But for now, this is where we are. But yeah, just a gorgeous, gorgeous shade of blue-gray. Then we've got Herban's Vert de Gris. I absolutely adore this ink. Very wet, very, very pigmented, especially compared to the inks that I usually go for, but I just think it's such a gorgeous shade of green-gray. Um, you can see here, when you do have a really broad nib, you do get a little bit of haloing around there with a teeny tiny hint of that sort of almost red sheen but you do have to really lay down the ink so it's not a normal occurrence there's not a ton of shading here but it's just a really good color now below is ferris wheel presses adventurine this is a wicked pale gray it is very very light but you can also see that there's a ton of shimmer in there, a good amount of shade. It's really, really lovely, works well in those broader nibs, and also makes a really nice wash when you're doing sort of watercolor projects, but I do really enjoy it. And below, like I said before, it is a pretty terrible swatch, and I apologize for that. Birmingham Pen Company's Pondweed. This is a beautiful gray-green. Um, definitely leaning towards the gray rather than the green, but it's beautiful. It shades really, really well. Very wet, works well, even in your drier, fine nibs, and it's just a great color, I think. Okay, here is my Birmingham Pen Company's Molten Tin. You can see the red has pretty much dried away, but that was kind of one of the things that I love the most about this ink is that it shifts so much. And now you're just left with this really beautiful blue lavender kind of gray color. You do get little pops of the red when you really lay down the ink, but for the most part, it's pretty standard. Uh, and it's just a gorgeous color, gorgeous color, I think. Right below there, this is one of my favorite colors, to be honest. Dominant Industries Midnight. It is a Cult Pens exclusive. You've got this gorgeous shimmer, if I can get that to pick up. And I said this before, but it is a little bit dry, but I think totally worth dealing with just because it does lay down this gorgeous color with that shimmer on top. And it's just a really, really, really pretty shade of sort of that dark, dark gray purple. Now below that one, we've got Troublemaker Petrichor. This is my favorite Petrichor, or favorite Troublemaker ink. It is wicked dry, but fantastic. Um, it's a chromo shader. You can see right there, we've got pink, you've got blue, you've got gray, a little bit of teal, an insane amount of shading. And 
it's just, it's just a really, really pretty color that I really strongly recommend. Right below that is the Diamine Reddit, um, collaboration. And it's that Celadon Cat, very, very light green, but so pretty. Definitely more of a medium to broad to stub nib, but it looks beautiful. And look at this swatch with some of that pale pink going with the light green and the teals. It's a really pretty color. Right below that is Vinta's Apex Silver Hadabon. It has loads of purple gray in it. There is this really pretty silver shimmer that you can see very well in the writing sample. So it doesn't just land in the swatch, but it's a really gorgeous, legible, light sort of lavender gray. Um, I've used this one in fine nibs and it's always worked really well for me. So, you know, it's, it's one that is a very comfortable level of shimmer, but still like very apparent no matter what. And for the very last is my Vinta Aegean or Armada. This is just a really beautiful, very shade heavy gray. I just really like this color. I use it all the time. It's one of those reliable gray colors that I know um, I'll always enjoy writing with and that will always be legible, but still interesting. So also a big recommendation there. So yeah, those are all of my April showers gray inks. I had such a hard time narrowing it down to 12. I will say this experience has taught me that I should probably stick to five or less inks per page when I'm doing these spreads because it, it does, I admit, get like kind of hard to sort of do the samples and really get a good idea of what a swatch looks like and everything. Uh, so apologies for trying to cram so much in, but I just, I really, really like gray inks and I didn't want to cut any more of these. I originally started with a list that was like 20 inks deep and I had to like cull it and it was so hard just to get to these 12. So 10 was not something I was going to be able to do. So we are where we are. In any case, Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions about any of these individual inks, if you're curious about what inks I left out, please, please pop those in the comments below. If you have any experiences with these that you want to talk about, if they, be it good or bad, definitely feel free to share those too, because obviously I'm just one person. So maybe my experiences with an ink are not indicative of somebody else's. Uh, in any case, definitely comment. I love talking about inks. It's one of my favorite things to do. So always feel free. Uh, again, thank you so, so much for joining me. If you have made it to the end of this 12 ink swatching uh, video, you are everything that is awesome. And hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.